What is up, nerd friends? Welcome back to the Nerd Bench. This week, we're going to take a look at the settings of the Easy Run Max 5 HV G2, one of the latest installments in the Max series that got the G2 treatment, waterproof, good times, up to 12S rated. This guy does 6 to 12S rating, and you can find out all that hard information in the link in the description down below. We're just going to go over the settings. The speed control comes with an instruction manual and tells you what all the settings can or cannot do, but this is a quick debriefing of that and some other hot topics to come up frequently. The Easy Run Max series will work with the LED program card, with the OTA and the app, or they will also work with the LCD programming box. In addition to that, the uh, Tunalizer also has the OTA built into it. So if you have one of these, you can do speed control tuning as well. If you do have one of the LED program cards, one thing to keep in mind is that the sticker on your box, these setting numbers, may not match the speed control. You're going to want to reference the speed control's instruction manual just in case. Also, these guys do not plug into the receiver wire. They get connected using the included double-ended harness, one side to the box, one side to the port that's on the top of the speed control. There is a dedicated programming port with orientations for you right there. A lot of folks assume that you have to have a programmer and that is not true. You can install one of these and calibrate it into the vehicle with nothing else additional and it'll run off the default settings of the speed control. You can find out what those default settings are by checking your speed control's instruction manual or you know you can get it right off the website as well. So we're going to take the OTA, connect it and run through what all the settings are, when you might want to use them, all that fun stuff. Now you do have to have a battery pack plugged in. This has two battery packs plugged in right over there. I turn on the speed control, little light comes on, and then on your HW Link app, you tap the little icon there, you select your device. This one is called Charlie OTA, otherwise it will call BLE something HW. And then once that connects, you can get in and adjust your speed control parameters. If you've never hooked up to an OTA before, the default password is all 8s, 8888866, number 8s anyway. Uh, you go to parameters and then you can jump in and see what all the speed control settings are. All right, so once we get into the parameters, we can see what we got going on. Um, at the top is your link and unlink situation. You check for updates right there as well. Uh, but you can rename your speed control or the speed control profile, depending on what you got going on. You can reset all of the parameters. If you don't like all the settings, that's the factory reset. If you have settings for the speed control already saved in your phone, you can import them there. You can use this to export and save them to your phone. And then to actually make the settings changes, you have to tap the save button. So that saves to the speed control itself. So first in the setup is is the running mode that is the operation of the speed controls forward reverse brakes all that fun stuff you can make it so that it's like a rock crawler so it goes instant forward to reverse or you can actually turn off the reverse as well lipo cells allows you to set the specific voltage that you or the cells that you're going to run rather so if you're always going to run 6s or always going to run 8s or always going to run 10s you can set that here so that it doesn't allow you to run any other voltages kind of like a safety deal um, but if you're going to run multiple voltages auto calculation will let the speed control figure that out for you Low voltage cutoff is how far the speed control allows the battery packs to be discharged before it kicks in the LiPo safety. So the lower that is, the more runtime you're going to get. The higher that is, the less runtime you're going to get or the safer it's going to be. Some speed controls have numbers there. A lot of the speed controls, we don't do numbers because the numbers aren't going to match what the voltage of the battery is, and that can cause some confusion. So low is going to be about 3.3-ish per cell. Uh, intermediate is probably going to be closer to 3.5, 3.6 per cell. And then high is probably going to be above like 3.7 per cell. So if you want to be very safe, you leave it in intermediate or high. If you want to get most runtime, you can go to that low setting if you want to. Motor rotation is the forward direction the speed control is going to run the motor. Some vehicles need a backwards transmission or have a backwards motor. So if you give it gas, the motor needs to go backwards. Or, for example, if you do a new build and you give it throttle and the tires spin backwards, motor rotation is where you correct that. You don't want to use the radios reversing to do that because that will make things go wonky. And in a sensor-less setup, often you can just switch the, the two outside wires on the motor to make the direction change. But for sensorless or censored setups like this, is you definitely don't want to do that. Uh, BEC voltage is adjustable in case you got a high voltage BEC. You can change the voltage that goes to the receiver and the servos right there. Uh, now we get into the fun stuff, the advanced settings. Uh, max brake force is how strong your brakes are. A lot of times in these big fast go or these big go fast rigs, the full power brakes is way too much. So turning that down a little bit helps us all be better drivers. Max reverse force is how fast the reverse is. You can turn down the reverse speed. Some of us are very bad at pushing the reverse when we need to, so this allows you to reduce some of that power. Start mode or the punch is how 
I guess, one-to-one -one response the throttle is. If you're very twitchy on the throttle and the, the truck is responding poorly to that input, you can lower the start mode setting to make it slow down the throttle response. And it's just less linear the lower it goes. So lower is going to be a slower throttle response. Higher is a one-to-one -one response. So nine is the highest. I like my throttle nice and linear. So I typically run all mine all the way up. If you do have like some stuttering or hesitations if you click the gas or move the throttle real fast means that maybe it's over geared or the battery packs aren't up to the task or the plugs are too small for the application lowering your start mode or the punch will help deal with that and make it not stutter or run a little bit better uh, drag brake is your brakes at neutral when you let off the throttle and you're, you're at neutral it'll apply brakes to the motor it's good for track applications if you're using a lot of push brake to get around the track a lot sometimes some drag brake will help the auto brakes so to speak it's not really drag racing brakes it's just automatic brakes at neutral and it does add a little bit of heat so use it sparingly i tend to kind of never run drag brake unless i'm running on a heavy heavy braking situation at a racetrack Initial throttle force. This is one of the settings that is a little different. In the LED program card, you only get 10 settings. With the OTA or with the LCD box, you get 1% step adjustment. So you get a lot more tunability in this. And what the initial throttle force is, is the kind of the starting power of the motor. So if you want it to, the, when you very like, touch the throttle to take off a little harder, initial throttle force does that for you. Low is going to be the most smooth one-to-one -one ratio where a little bit of throttle is a little bit of motor, and then you make it go higher than that if you want to. Uh, up next are two turbo settings, turbo timing and turbo delay. Now, turbo is electronic timing advance from the speed control to make the motor go faster. It takes the timing or the rotation of the motor into account, and it actually overdrives the speed control to make the motor go quicker. And people say, well, why wouldn't you just run that all of the time? It seems great. It comes at the cost of temperature and runtime. You lose runtime. Things get a little bit hotter, more sensitive to gearing, stuff like that. So if you're going to get into doing the turbo, you want to make sure that you know what you're getting yourself into. To, it can create some problems. Um, two types of turbo settings here. Turbo timing is the amount it gives you, and so the more is faster, obviously. And then the turbo delay is how long after full throttle it comes in. So, so you can kind of use that as a safety factor. If you only want your turbo to kick in when you're you know, kind of deep in the throttle for a while, you can set your turbo delay very long, and that'll make sure that the car is kind of all the way up to speed, a little bit safer uh, when it applies the timing, so to speak. And then you can get down here and at the very bottom, you can see the speed control. If it, if your speed control has data logging, it'll show you the basic information that's here. And this one obviously does. So we, we get a little bit of information. Uh, max speed control temperature that it records for motors that have temperature sensors. It gives you the motor temperature, uh, the minimum battery voltage. So how far you sap your batteries down and a motor RPM value as well. Max motor RPM. Value. Right, so we can back out of there. And then one more cool feature that I like to show if we're bench top testing, real time data, the new generation you can see the data out of the speed control via the Bluetooth module. It takes a moment here and then it's going to uh, boop. Oh, make me a liar, but here it comes. It lights up and then you can see your throttle input, RPM, how much current the speed control is being drawn or how much current the speed control is passing, the voltage of the battery packs, the temperature of the motor and the speed control. And this is a great benchtop tuner if you're troubleshooting something like that or want to do some simple comparisons, you can hook this up, run it a little bit on the bench and see what's going on. Or if you have your OT installed while you're driving around on the track, you can pull over to yourself, link up and then see your data here and get an idea what's going on with your speed control and your motor. So real-time data, cool benchtop uh, pit stop type of feature, but um, because of the range of Bluetooth, that's not something you're going to be like drive around very far and stay linked up so something to keep in mind we get asked all the time is the max 6 getting this update it would be pretty safe to say that all of the max series will eventually get this update and in any generation of speed control here at Hobbywind, they all kind of get the the updates over time in a given series so i think max 6 is coming when when or how i have no idea unfortunately we also get asked do these work with regular censored motors they can be we're working on getting the adapters released so that you can get an adapter that makes the speed control match regular motors or these waterproof style motors match regular speed control so it goes both ways. These are kind of unique to the Hobbywing series. Also, these do not work with the axe motors. They're the same plug, but you don't want to plug these in with the Max. Also, these Max series that are waterproof with the sensor wire still run the sensorless motors. There's no adapter to make that temp sensor work that we had on our V2 motors, but they do do normal sensorless operation like any of the sensored speed controls in the Hobbywing lineup. 
Well, there you have it, folks. A quick look at the settings and the features of the Easy Run Max 5 HV G2 Speed Control, one of the newest in the Easy Run lineup here at Hobbywing. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns, maybe we missed something, we overlooked it, please feel free to shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com, and we will be happy to help. We do have a podcast. It's called RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing. We give away a free Hobbywing system each and every episode. All you have to do to find out how to enter to win is listen to an episode. Just look up RC Stuff, powered by Hobbywing, on your favorite podcast service. And as always, folks, thanks for tuning in. Another episode of The Charlie Show right here on the Hobbywing official YouTube channel.